so we figured this would be the best set because now you've all had a few drinks and the more you drink, the better we sound. <laughs> because you're drinking and we're not, so. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, so we had a special request for this next song. This was, um, this was the title track of the uh, second album that I did, Still the Rain, and um, I'm, uh, I love this song, it really meant a lot to me the first time I heard it, I got goosebumps. Uh, it was actually written by the man who produced my record, Dennis Walker, and Alan Mercatoni, who played guitar, and uh, Al also <coughs> wrote Company Graveyard, the song that we did the last set. And he was an amazing guitar player. He was so good that when he would play in L.A., and he only played at these little clubs because he gave up touring and was just a producer and a songwriter. But Slash would come and sit in with him. That's how great Al was. And uh, I always think of Al. Um, he actually recorded the guitar part um, on 10 Miles of Bad Road for Company Graveyard. And in about three weeks after we finished recording, Al passed away. So, these songs really mean a lot to me because he was an incredible person. I was really blessed to um, have worked with him in my life. And um, I heard him do this song in this little tiny bar in Burbank, and I just got goosebumps and I knew I had to record it, and so I did. And um, I don't know if you can see this. Let me see. <laughs> well, help me out! Help me out! <laughs> so, I have these tattoos. I have a lot of tattoos. But right here, um, this is a Fiori, and she's got two feathers, and one is purple and one is blue for domestic violence and for sexual assault. I'm a domestic violence advocate, and I really believe in having a zero-tolerance world where we all love each other and care for each other, and nobody hurts anybody. I'm stuck. <laughs> so, that's a reminder. Usually I can see it. I'm wearing this very tight jacket that restricting my mood. But anyway, uh, that's what this is about. So we're gonna we're gonna do this song. And uh, here we go. was bruised as she kneeled to pray she couldn't take it one more day he's passed out cold from his drunken rage the thunder roll that was the final stage
death letter blues. <laughs> Is that too, too sad? Two too in a row, too sad? No. Should we do something happier? Well, we'll ask the audience. You want to hear something happy and funny or something dramatic? Dramatic. dramatic, see? They're my kind of people. I told you. <laughs> she's like, I don't know. I don't think they want to hear any happy songs. I think they like the. <laughs> and she said, it's got to be the wood. <laughs> but it's not Norwegian wood, it's <laughs> Dutch wood. <laughs> All right, so then in that case, let's do. This is a song. I really love this song. Um, Death Letter Blues was recorded by the late, great Sun House in 1934. It was the biggest hit of his career. And um, way back when, you know, blues artists would sing, uh, maybe you got a little bit of money, but sometimes you would sing or play guitar for uh, fish and beer. And the more you sang, the more fish and beer you got. <laughs> So, this particular song sometimes would have, you know, 84 verses to it, because he wanted fish and beer. And <laughs> uh, one of the things that I love about the blues is that a song that was recorded in 1934 still sounds really great today. I mean, almost, almost uh, 100 years later, right? What is that? Is that Radio Free Europe coming in? It's a cell phone. <laughs> it's probably mine. <laughs> it's my son's. Mom, I have a huge favor to ask. <laughs> and then he never asked the favor. He texted me a message. Sorry, he's 19. He's not little. So you can imagine if your 19 year old sends you a text saying, I have a huge favor to ask. <laughs> and. <laughs> and it's like 14 hours later, I don't know what the favor is. I already gave him my car, so I don't have to worry if he wrecks it. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is a uh, Death Loader Blues. Thank you. 
to love somebody don't love you can't get satisfaction i don't care what you do about loving someone who's addicted to something and no matter how much love you pour on them you're never ever ever going to be able to replace what they're addicted to and you kind of get addicted to them and that's what this is about Another love 
without you present. <laughs> Talk a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, I just, just had to consult for a second. Because he has two guitars. And, and uh, I made the set list without taking that into account. Uh, so this next song, um, how many of you are familiar with the Greek classics? You didn't know this was a history thing, did you? What? It's a blues show. What, she just asked me? All right. Well, um, I love the, the classics. I love all the myths and the stories. and. One of the stories I was really taken with was um, about Persephone. So Persephone was the daughter of Demeter, and Demeter was the goddess of the earth. She's the one that made the grain grow and, and made it possible for people to eat and do all of this stuff. And her daughter Persephone was so beautiful, so beautiful, that she caught Hades' eye. Now Hades was the god of the underworld. And as you can imagine, finding someone to share that space with him was pretty hard. Hey, want to come and hang out and help? No takers, right? <laughs> so he had to resort to treachery and trickery to grab Persephone and drag her to hell. And that's what he did. And she didn't want to go. And when her mother found out what Hades did, she said, give my daughter back. And Hades said, no. Nope. I finally got someone to share my space, keeping her here. And Demeter said, fine, then nothing will grow until I get my daughter back. And that was it. Pestilence, drought, nothing grew. The earth was a terrible place. People were starving and weeping and crying. Please do something. 
So finally they came to an agreement and half of the year Persephone came out of the underworld and that's when we had spring and summer. And then she had to go back and that's when everything dies and gets still as her mother grieves. <coughs> so I wrote this song about Persephone. Because I kind of think there are parallels with modern relationships too. over to the resonator now and uh, you okay with me telling you these little stories and everything well, okay so uh, this next song that I wrote is called punk rock Johnny Cash and um, I wrote it about a man I never met his name was Jesse Morris and he was a busker in San Francisco he worked in the subway um, playing for money um, and his appearance was kind of intimidating you know he was like a 6'4 and he dressed like a punk rocker and some, at one point he had like a, a, a orange mohawk and he wore Doc Martens and he was really tall and he had tattoos all over his neck and all over his hands and he looked kind of scary. If you saw him, you might, you might be kind of nervous, you know? But um, the truth was, he was actually a really sweet person. And when he played guitar and sang, he sounded just like Johnny Cash. And you don't even have to take my word for it. If you Google 
punk rock Johnny Cash, you'll hear Jesse Morris. I kind of fell in love with him through these videos that I watched, and I was um, brokenhearted to discover that um, he had passed away, and that I would never actually get to meet him in person. He's someone I would have loved to have shared the stage with. So I did the next best thing that I could, and I, I wrote this song for him, um, because he touched so many people's lives, thousands of people every single day, just being in the subway, playing for nothing. And uh, I wanted to, I wanted to make that special. I wanted people to remember him, so I wrote this song for him. It's called Punk Rock Johnny Cash. Still play on The world can hurt 
do another song. You guys want to hear Ben do another song? Would you, um, you know what I would like to hear? If you're, if you're in the mood for it. Which you're going to be, because I'm going to tell you. What. <laughs> ben has a new record out, and you actually can't buy it anywhere right now. Um, but this is the title track of his new record. And uh, in fact, the song that you sang earlier, Retreat, is on this. Anyway, I really love this record. This is the first song in the album, and as soon as I heard it, I was like, yes! <laughs> so, I'm being selfish. I'm, I'm asking him to play the songs that I like the best. <laughs> That's what I do too with the <laughs> Okay. Go ahead, Ben. Entertain the people. How about it for Karen Lovely? She also has, I think she, how many, you got three great CDs with you? Maybe even four if you have your prohibition? And uh, she was nominated for four Blues Music Awards, including Female Artist of the Year by the Blues Blast Awards this last... Uh, yeah, Blues Blast Music Awards. Blues Music Awards. Oh. Yeah. So, Karen Lovely. <laughs> Song, I always like to romanticize about the size of the town I grew up in. I always like to pretend like it's a lot smaller than it really is. And that's this next song does that. Still pretty small, man. It's 20,000 people. <laughs> but there's only 90 here, right? Say, <laughs> so this one's called, uh, maybe you can relate to it. This one's called I Take the Dirt Road Home. About trying to get out of the city. When it starts driving you crazy. 